YouTube Oz it going. The Go Dows is back. We are past the NFL roster deadline. Teams are hanging on to some of these trade candidates. We're going to break down these guys that have a decent probability of getting dealt at any given time. And we'll talk about some of my favorite landing spots for them as well. Let's break it down. We've been talking about Tyler Huntley as a potential trade candidate. I think it's getting more and more serious. The Browns really like DTR. Obviously, Watson's their starter, but they really like DTR. And there was reports that Jameis Winston could be shopped or could could be yeah, traded, but it, it sounds like those are false. So that kind of leaves Tyler Huntley to either be traded or cut. I think he's a pretty decent backup quarterback where I think the Browns can get something for him rather than cutting him. So picked up my top three favorite fits. It feels like the Cardinals are looking for a backup quarterback, possibly an upgrade. They did bring Ritter back on the practice squad, but again, that is just the practice squad. Ravens, Huntley worked well as the backup behind Lamar, which is a pretty important job. They do have Josh Johnson, but I think an upgrade, bringing Huntley back. In the Chargers, we've talked about it in the past, I think they can upgrade at the, at the backup quarterback spot. Herbert dealing with a little bit of an injury and would fit Greg Roman's offense, obviously his background being with the Baltimore Ravens. So those are the three teams I'm mainly looking at, and I do think they will all consider adding a, a backup quarterback, and you have a legit one here in Tyler Huntley. Uh, I think he could go for, at this point, probably won't go for anything great. I think there was a point where they probably could have got a fifth-round pick for him. That's probably the maximum right now, but I'm not expecting him to be a sixth-round pick uh, if if – you know, they're about to cut them, then maybe it could be a little less than that and it'd be a pretty good deal for, for the uh, acquiring team. Another quarterback, Taylor Heineke from the Falcons. It was a little surprising that Atlanta held on to him, but they're, I believe they're trying to trade him unless they think because Cousins went down last year and Penix has durability concerns. Maybe they need they need to value the third their third quarterback. That's definitely possible. Uh, but I thought he was going to get cut after they couldn't trade him, but they, they hung on to him, obviously. So they could be trying to trade him still. Same teams. Those are the teams I think are looking for a backup quarterback, and I think he would fit those uh, th those teams pretty well. He does make sense as a fit behind Kyler Murray. I, you know, if he had to play ever for the Ravens, I think he can play pretty good ball. Kind of where, where um, he made a name for himself a few years ago. And the Chargers, I'd think an upgrade over Easton Stick, but maybe they would rather just keep Stick. It's definitely, you know. Well, I don't know if anyone's dying to trade for Heineke right now, but it just really feels like he is an option out there, uh, and there are a few teams that we mentioned that could really use a backup quarterback still. We're going to talk about a couple of running backs here. Damian Pierce, who, who we touched on multiple times in the past in past trade videos. Uh, the Texans ha held on to a good amount of running backs. I don't know if they're going to go into the season carrying all those guys, so they could move on, on from one, whether it's trade or cut, and maybe it's not necessarily Pierce, but... The new staff last year, which was a new staff last year, didn't love Pierce. They didn't hate him. He played a little bit, but it just didn't really seem like a scheme fit. So I do think he could use a new home and other team may value him more. I really like the Browns. I like the Browns above the rest for sure. I think it, it's what they wanted in Deontay Foreman. Was a little surprised they move on from Foreman when they did that, but uh, you know, and it, two active running backs right now, and one of them, Jerome Ford, very solid. The other one, Pierre Strong. I mean, how many reps do you really want Pierre Strong to get? I feel like he's just down the depth chart type running back. That's worthy of a roster spot, but uh, the Vikings only held on to two running backs, so they could be looking for another one. We've seen Pierce return kicks at times, and they moved on from their running back that can return kicks. Wagner, who ended up going to the Saints. And the Packers, this kind of could replace A.J. Dillon, their physical back that uh, end up getting injured. And remember, Marshawn Lloyd is dealing with an injury as well. So it's Josh Jacobs, uh, you know, mainly getting the load for right now. They're going to need someone else, at least for right now. So those are teams that stood out. Would like the Colts as well in division trade. I guess more possible these days. And there are other teams that need a running back. It's just who will view him as a fit. I think he needs a specific type of team. Another running back, I think maybe a little safer of an option than Damian Pierce. Pierce, Pierce is like a boomer bust type guy if you trade for him. Uh, Jeff Wilson, I think, fits pretty much any team, but probably those outside zone teams would prefer him, and he's kind of a polished veteran that's that's used to the, the role of being a rotational guy, the situation of having to step up if he needs to. Uh, I love the three teams listed. I think it's a really they're all really good fits, and they're all looking for a backup running back. We know he's a good fit with the 49ers because he's played and played fairly well for the 49ers. They moved him to the Dolphins and Mike McDaniel a few years ago, and now the Dolphins are loaded up with running backs, but they may not trade him because Achan may get some work as a receiver. We're right 
could technically be the running back too. I still think a chance of running back, but um, and then they do have some durability concerns, so it might be important for them to hang on to an extra running back. But they are loaded there. The 49ers, the Vikings, they can use them as a running back two or three that actually plays. And same with the Packers, at least earlier in the year. So I, those fits make a ton of sense. They they really make sense. Uh, you know, for Jeff Wilson, kind of a plug and play if you needed to, even though he's not going to start, but if they need him to, and then some of those teams may need him to play right away. So that's a guy to keep an eye on for just because the Dolphins running back situation. But again, like I explained, they may, they, they could just keep them just because durability concerns and how they use guys different ways. Um, it, it wouldn't make sense to, for a team like that to carry extra running backs, even though at, again, at first glance, it's like, this is a team that throws the ball so much. How do they need this many running backs? But if you really take a look at it, and understand how they operate, and then the durability concerns, it makes some sense. James Bradbury is one we talked about in the past as well. Some people were surprised the Eagles kept him, and there was actually some trade talks I heard uh, before keeping him. So I think they're still trying to trade him. They're trying to work him in at safety as well. It's I, I feel like best case for, for the Eagles and for another team is they, they reach an agreement on a deal, like a cheaper cost. Titans, believe it or not, they've been trading for everybody, especially in the secondary, but they need depth that corner pretty badly, and he's a guy that could be a high-end backup corner or he can start in the slot, but they do have options there as well. He is transitioning to safety. They could use depth at that spot as well, so you kind of get a, a guy that can play any of those spots uh, as a high-end backup, and if you need him to start and fill in, it's a guy with that experience, and I, I believe it or not, has good play, really good play in the past, just not the recent past. Uh, so they, they can make some stuff. The Cowboys badly need cornerback help, whether it's depth, but maybe a starter because Deron Bland went down for a chunk of the season, which was unfortunate. Remember, Diggs was hurt last year. He's good to go, but it's a little scary over there, a team that was known for their corners, maybe not so much for right now while there's some injuries. So in division trade, though, more of those are happening these days, so I think it can work. In the Bengals, the Bengals got some pretty decent young corners, but they have very little to no depth, and it's a guy that, again, could play outside corner, could play. That's probably where they would use him, but a guy that might be able to line up in different spots, and they typically like those types of players. But for them, that's kind of where they need, they need a high-end depth corner, so that would make some sense as well. But I can list a lot of fits. I heard a lot of teams are list, list, uh, looking for corners, excuse me. Uh, those are three that really stand out at this second, but be an interesting guy to watch. Here's a wild card one, Chigo Quanquo, who's kind of a weapon at the tight end position, a hybrid player, you know, going to use him in the slot, not your traditional inline tight end. The Titans kept a bunch of tight ends, which is unusual in their new coaching staff slash system doesn't really call for one of these types of tight ends. I typically like those inline tight ends. Josh Wiley is supposed to be their number one. Haven't heard anything about this possibly being a trade, but it was kind of odd that they kept that many tight ends. So I, it made me wonder and uh, picked out some favorite fits. The Eagles, believe it or not, we've seen them make trades with the Titans in the past, uh, you know, like an A.J. Brown trade, but it's a, an option that they don't really have in their offense, and they definitely could use another tight end. It just seems like it, he would uh, work very nicely uh, with his athletic ability and his, I guess, versatility because you can move around in different spots. I just feel like it would work nicely with the Eagles. The Saints, you know, it's kind of up in the air on who's going to play majority of snaps at tight end for them. They can definitely use one. Will they be looking for this type of gadget type tight end, if you will? And the Vikings, who TJ Hawkinson going to be out at least four weeks. I'm probably, I'm thinking he's going to be out maybe six weeks would be my guess. Come back after that bye week. Uh, they do have Josh Oliver, but he's an inline blocking guy, a little sneaky catching the ball. They could use someone like this to kind of get creative and help Sam Darnold out, Sam Darnold out a little bit. Uh, but the, it's an interesting player who in the right system that has actually a lot of upside and could be a playmaker, could be an impact, but it is difficult to figure out exactly, exactly what team would view him as a fit. It's got to be a limited number of fits because he's such a, a unique type of type. Maybe another John U. Smith who was with Tennessee. He was kind of the replacement for that, and he just only works on certain teams, but you have a younger one with more upside. So he's an interesting one. We'll see what happens with the Titans, the Titans tight end group. Uh, you know, going forward, make sure to subscribe, turn notifications on and join us for our in-season content, weekly picks, picks against the spread power rankings and more all starts next week. Cannot wait. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.